Yeah, I'm about to do this live show based on the actor Bruce Willis. Yes, right. Walter Bruce Willis. Let's go to, to the early life right here. Walter Bruce Willis was born in Idar Oberstein, West Germany on March 19th, 1955. His mother, Marlene, was German from Kassel. His father, David Willis, was an American soldier. Willis, Willis has a younger sister, Florence, and two younger brothers, Robert, who have, who have, who have died, uh, and David. After being discharged from the, from the military in the 1950s, the late 1950s, his father relocated his entire family, their family, that's, that's what I know of, his father, uh, David, uh, relocated the family to, to Carney's Point, to Carney's Point, New Jersey. Uh, that could be, that could be uh, David's hometown. That could be David's hometown. Uh, Willis described, has described his background. Yeah, uh, Bruce, Bruce Willis had already told stories. That's what Bruce Willis did. Uh, Bruce told stories that he had he had described that that his background as a long line of of the blue collar people. His mother worked at a in a bank. Well, she was probably going to be a teller, and uh, his his father was a welder and master mechanic and factory worker. It was it was those three. He was working as those three things. All the heads that his his father David had already worked worked those three jobs: welder, master mechanic, and a factory and a factory worker. Bruce Willis, Bruce Willis, man, he spoke with a stutter. Attended to a attending attending a school called Penn's Grove High School, where where. Well, uh, he was nicknamed. He was nicknamed Buck Buck uh, by his schoolmates. That's what his schoolmates nicknamed him as Buck Buck. He joined a drama club. Found found um, that acting on stage reduced his stutter, and was eventually elected student council president. After graduating in from high school. In, 19, in 1973, Willis worked as a security guard at the Salem Nuclear Power Plant and transported crew members at the DuPont Chamber Works Factory in Deepwater, New Jersey. After working as a PI, private investigator, that a role, a role that he would later play in a comedy drama series, Moonlighting, Moonlighting and an action comedy, film The Last Boy Scout. So he turned to acting. He enrolled he enrolled in the drama program at Montclair State University or MSU where he was cast in a production of The Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. He left school in the late 1970s and moved to New York where he supported himself, he supported himself in the early 80s as a bartender in the Manhattan art bar Kamikaze while living in Hell's Kitchen neighborhood. It's in New York. This was before Die Hard. His rise to fame here. Willis was cast as David Addison Jr., in the TV series Moonlighting from 85 to 89, from 1985 to 1989, competing against 3,000 other actors for the position, for the position, his starring role in Moonlighting opposite Civil Shepherd. 
Let me get the name. Opposite civil shepherd, civil lynch shepherd, who who helped and helped to establish him. She had established him. What's what she did? She's helping him. She's helped establish him as a comedic actor during the show's five seasons through moonlighting. He won an Emmy Award for the Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series and a Golden Globe Award for Best Actor, TV Series, Musical, or Comedy during the height of the show's success, Beverage Maker Seagram. Hire Willis as the pitch man, pitch man for their Golden Wine Cooler products. The advertising campaign paid uh, pay Willis uh, US five five to seven million dollars over two years. Willis chose not to renew his contract when he decided to stop drinking alcohol in 1988. Well, Willis he had his first lead role as in a future. You know, was it? What Willis do? He had his his, uh, his first lead role in a feature film in a 1987 Blake Edwards film, Blind Date, with Kim Basinger. Why does he put the name there? Kim Basinger and John Lorquette from, from Night Court. Edwards casted him again. Edwards cast him again. Guess who cast him again to play the real-life cowboy actor, Tom Mix? In Sunset, 19, in 1988 film Sunset. Let me see. Let me see who, who did that. Blake Edwards. Blake Edwards is responsible for casting Willis again to play this real-life cowboy named Tom Mix in a 1988 movie, Sunset. However, it was his unexpected turn to film Die Hard in 1988 as John McClane. Uh, uh, who was a fictional character, a fictional character and a main protagonist of the, of, the, uh, of, the, of the film series based on the action novel, Nothing Lasts Forever. That catapulted him to movie star to action hero status. Action hero status. If I can know why where action hero status came from, I want you to know about it. He, this man had performed, he performed one of his own, most of his own stunts in the film. And the film, the film has been grossing one, 130, 138 uh, millions, uh, 138,000 or what is this? 138,708,000 uh, a million. What is it? 138,708,708 million, million, uh, uh, million, 852 million worldwide. What is it? It's from 138,708. Uh, 1,708 million 852 worldwide. That's where it is. That's been film grossed. That was like a million. That was like 138,708 uh, um, uh, 852 million uh, dollars worldwide. Yeah, that's what money's been gross. He got all this money from the movie. That's worldwide. Follow the, follow the success that he had with with the movie, with the movie Die Hard. Willis had had a leading a leading role in the drama in country as a Vietnam veteran named Emmett Smith. Named Emmett Smith, who was a Vietnam veteran, uh, and also provided provided the voice. For a talking baby in look who's look who's talking as a uh, Mikey, and then the sequel, and then the sequel, look who's talking to. 
well, or I paid the Kirstie Alley. I, I, I miss, I miss Kirstie Alley. In the late 80s, in the late 1980s, Willis enjoyed a moderate success as a recording artist. As a recording artist, recording an album of pop blues, The Return of Bruno, which, in, which included a hit single, Respect Yourself, Respect Yourself, featuring the Pointer Sisters. The LP was promoted by Smidal Tap, a rockumentary parody featuring scenes, featuring scenes of Willis was performing as future scenes of Willis performing at a, at a famous event, those famous events, including including the legendary Woodstock. Legendary Woodstock. He released the he released a version of Under the Boardwalk, a drip to song, as a second single. As a second single, you know, that's that's one thing he had. He had that's one he's working on. A second, a second single. Second single, it, it just reached number two on the UK singles uh, chart, at least, but was less successful in the US. Wallace will return to the recording studio like several times until the 90s happened. He been sequels from Die Hard to Pulp Fiction and the dramatic roles that he was doing. Having acquired major, major personal success, let me see him. Having acquired major personal success and pop culture influence, playing as the John McClane character in Die Hard, Willis had reprised his role in the sequels of Die Hard 2, uh, Die Hard with a Vengeance. That's where the two movies is, and Die Hard with a Vengeance. I think, I think Samuel L. Jackson might be in one. Yeah, Jeremy Jeremy Irons, the guy who played uh, who played Uncle Scar on The Lion King. Yeah, the sequels. That role that Willis had report uh, he reprised in those sequels. You got Die Hard Two. Well, Die Hard One is is featuring uh, Alan Rickman featuring Alan Rickman, Bonnie Bedelia, and Reggie and Reggie Bell Johnson. Uh, this is before Family Matters. This is before Family Matters. That's before Reggie decided to be uh to be on Family Matters. He has a Chicago cop, you know, Chicago police officer Carl Otis Winslow. Yeah, he played as Carl Winslow, who was a Chicago police officer. The two sequels that he the sequels that he did, he reprised them. He reprised it in those in those two sequels of Die Hard was was a uh, those three were there were there was a uh, Die Hard two and Die Hard with a Vengeance. These are two these are sequels that he had to date that have uh, to date. So these are the these are the the three uh, installments the first. Three installments in the Die Hard series. The Die Hard series have grossed over seven hundred million internally. Internationally, what can, what else can you get? I mean, the, the series have grossed. The series have grossed over like what in the U.S. in the United States for like seven hundred million dollars internationally. Internationally. And it's propelling Willis to the to the first rank of Hollywood action stars, especially Hollywood action stars. Yeah, all the Hollywood action stars that he might be in the rank of them until around early 1990s. What else did Willis Willis's career would do has suffered? Yeah, it's suffering. It's suffering a, a moderate slump. That's what happened in the early 90s. As he starred in some flops, some flops like these these flop movies that they, they get him in, such as Bonfire, Bonfire of the Vanities, and Hudson Hawk. Hudson Hawk, the the two movies that he did, the other movies that he did, was the Last Boy Scout with uh with Damon Wayans. 
uh, Keenan Ivory Wayans' brother, uh, striking dis strike it, striking distance. Yes, it will be striking distance. Uh, and he flopped. He started flopping again. He started flopping again with with the color of night, the color of night. It was savagely. It was savaged by the critics, and it did well in the home video market. The home video market. And, and it became one of the top 20 most rented films in the US in 1995. In 1995, then Maxim, they're ranking Maxim, they also ranking, ranking his uh his sex scene. They ranking his sex scene in the film as the best in the film, it's best in the history of films. It's in the best in the history of films. Film history, that's what we call it. It said that's what it told me. It said Maxim, Maxim, he they also ranking the sex scene that, that Bruce Willis, Bruce Willis had done in one of those movies. That was in the film as the best in film history. And that's what they all knew it. 1994. Willis had Willis had also he also had a leading leading role. In one part of Pulp Fiction, which was a, which was a Quentin Tarantino's acclaimed, the film gave film success is gave a boost. The film success had gave a boost to his career, and he starred alongside John Travolta, who was a uh, who who was working with who was working with in 1989. On the look who's look who's talking movie, yeah. On the look who's talking movie, uh, you know. But in 1996, in 1996, he was the executive producer and star of the cartoon Bruno Bruno the Kid. Bruno the Kid. Let me show you this. Bruno the Kid. This is a cart. This is a, a cartoon. It's a cartoon that's been out. Uh, I think it's from Nickelodeon. It which it which featured a CGI representation of himself. They have yeah, you have you have you have, you have a, a CGI a CGI representation of himself that same year he starred he starred in uh, uh Mike Mike Judge's Beavis and Butthead. Do America, yeah, Beavis and Butthead. They it's they they have started him. They put him. They put him in the movie. Uh, on a what's it? They put him. They put him in a in a the film, an animated film that was for Mike for Mike Judge, Beavis and Butthead, Do America, and Demi Moore. Demi Moore, his used to be his used to be wife. His used to be wife, then wife. His then wife. Uh that was in the movie. That was in the movie. He played a drunken criminal named Muddy Grimes, who mistakenly who was mistakenly sent judges titular characters to kill his wife, to kill his wife, Dallas, who was voiced, who was voiced by, by Moore. He then played the role. The leading roles he played the leading roles in Twelve Monkeys in Twelve Monkeys. It's Twelve Monkeys. <sighs> I think I've seen the movie. I think I've seen the movie. It was a 1995. It was a 1995 film. Um, and the fifth element, the fifth element, I think, I think, uh, Gary Oldman and Chris Tucker and Ian Holm was already in it. However, by the end of the nineties, his career had fallen into another, into another slump, another slump with this critically panned films like, like uh, the names like the Jackal, 
at the Jackal, um, Mercury Rising, and Breakfast in the Breakfast of Champions. The Breakfast of Champions. So, as well as well as the implosion of the production Broadway Brawler. Let me show you this. The Broadway Brawler. A debacle. Yeah, the implosion of the yeah. Well, as well as the implosion, the implosion of the production. The production of the Broadway, uh, the Broadway brawler, that's a, a, a debacle. A debacle that's been salvaged has been salvaged only by the success of the Michael Bay directed Armageddon, which Willis had had agreed to star as in a compensation for the failed production for the failed production, and which turned out to be. The highest grossing film, highest grossing film of 1998 worldwide. The same year, his voice, his voice and likeness. Yes, his voice and likeness have were featured in, in the PlayStation video game Apocalypse in 1999. I, I will let you people know. Uh, I'll let you know uh, that uh, the Lance Reddick, the Lance Reddick. Who's been known in in, in um, on the wire and fringe and some shows and he ended up in uh in the John Wick movie and playing the uh the character in Destiny 2 has has died at the age of 60. He was 60 years old and he passed away. All condolences go out to uh to uh to the family to the family of uh of uh of actor Lance Reddick. The same year, Bruce Bruce Willis Bruce Willis yeah the same year, Bruce Willis, uh had had his his voice and his likeness, were already were featured, in, the PlayStation video game, Apocalypse, Apocalypse I'll show you this here Apocalypse. It's a video game that was from Activision. It's a third-person shooter video game. Oh, that was like in the period in nineteen in nineteen ninety nine, in nineteen ninety nine, did Willis would do, what did Willis do by 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 uh, playing those characters? He will play in a story. He will play that story role. The story role that he played is in the film that was from M Night Shyamalan. M Night Shyamalan's film. He played a story role in The Sixth Sense, which was the M. Night Shyamalan film, which was both commercial, a commercial and a critical success that he, he had already garnered from that movie. Well, this movie is with uh this movie is with uh the likes of uh well uh, yeah. It's 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 with uh, the likes of Osmond. I did not know that. If he was working with Hill Joe Osmond, I did not know that. It was with Hill Joe Osmond. I did not know that. He was working with this guy. It's Hilly, it's Hilly Joe Osmond, the guy that uh Bruce Bruce used to work with. Bruce used to work with in 1999. So lo and behold. That movie, that film, that film could be uh could be both a commercial and at least at least a critical success, a critical success that nobody else even knew why it became a commercial and a critical success. That's working for, for Bruce. It works for Bruce in the 2000s. Willis had won the Emmy for an outstanding guest actor in a comedy series. But back in 2000, he did that. He did that. That was for his work. That was for his work on the Friends TV series. <clears throat> in, which, in which he played as the father, as the father of 
of Ross Geller's much younger girlfriend. He was nominated. He was nominated for a 2001 American Comedy Award in a. Almost, uh, I, I, have, I have substance coming up my eyes. Watch we watch we substance coming up my eyes. Almost choked up. He was also nominated, nominated for a 2001 American Comedy Awards, American Comedy Award in a the funniest male guest appearance in a TV series category, a TV series category. It was for his work on Friends. It's also on in a, in 2000. The Jimmy the Tulip character, the Jimmy the Tulip Tudeski character, the Jimmy the Jimmy Tudeski character, um, the Tulip. Why would Willis play as the uh, the whole nine yards? Play the character in the whole nine yards as Jimmy the Tulip, Jimmy the Tulip, Tudeski, Tudeski. His name Jimmy the Tulip, Jimmy the Tulip, Tudeski. Oh, he played that character in the whole nine yards. I did not even know that. Alongside Matthew Perry, alongside Matthew Perry, which he met on on Friends, Willis Willis uh uh I don't know if Willis met Matthew Perry. I think he met I think he met uh David Schwimmer in in uh in one of the episodes. I did not even know that. He had known uh David Schwimmer in the Friends TV show. But he played, but Willis played that character in the whole nine yards alongside David Schwimmer's, David Schwimmer's co-star. Okay. Matthew Perry. Uh, Willis, Willis could be uh, going to other roles and he'd be casting as some other guy, you know. Well, well, he do. He's 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 Walter. He's Walter Bruce Willis. He's the guy who wants to act. And this man's suffering with dementia. I gotta do this. I gotta do this for him. I gotta do this for him. I'm not gonna play a movie on this last show to be based on him. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm done playing movies based on my live shows. So Willis was Willis was uh, originally originally cast as Terry Benedict. Terry, that's the name. Terry Benedict. Well, not 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 Benedict Arnold, but as the character Terry Benedict in Ocean's Eleven, the two thousand one film. But. He had to drop out of he had to drop out of work. But he kind of dropped out of work on recording an album. Yes, recording an album. But in the sequel, in the sequel, Oceans, Oceans 12. This is after Oceans 11. He 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 wanted to be in the uh originally cat originally cast as this Terry Benedict character. But he decided to drop out of a, uh, of a, uh, of, of uh, what is it? He dropped out. He dropped out to work on that recording on uh, uh, an album that he wanted to do. Real men, real men don't drop out. Don't real real, real men don't even drop out of doing casting roles to uh to do move to do songs. Why would he drop out? Why would he start dropping out to work on a recording album? I'll never know. In the sequel, Ocean Ocean's Twelve. That's a two thousand four. That's a two thousand four film. That's a two thousand four film uh, that he did. That uh, that that night. Now he did. He did the film. But in two thousand four, that was from the likes of George Clooney. 
George Coney decided to meet him in the movie, but I did not know that. Willis makes makes a cameo appearance as himself. He never he never played a role. He never played a role. Uh, he never gave a chance to play a role as a as the Terry Benedict character. I think he just I think he dropped out of that character role that he they done that he's supposed to be doing. But he wants he wants to make a cameo appearance as himself and not not the Terry Benedict character. But in 2005, but in 2005, he appeared in the in the film adaptation, the film that, that's where he appeared in. Wallace Wallace appeared Wallace appeared in this in the in this film adaptation of Sin City, Sin City. But in 2006, he lent he lent his voice as R.J. the Raccoon in Over the Hedge. In 2007, in 2007, he appeared in the Planet Terror. The Planet Terror uh, is one half of the double feature Grindhouse. It was grind. It was like from one half of the double feature. It was called Grindhouse. Grindhouse as a villain, as a villain, as a villain, a mutant soldier. This mark. This marked. Willis's second collaboration with director with the director Robert Rodriguez following following the Sin City uh film adaptation. The Sin City uh movie, the film adaptation. Uh when Willis was appearing on the Late Show, he'd been appearing on several times throughout his career on the David Letterman Late Show. But he filmed. But he filled. He filled in for David Letterman. He filled. He filled in. Why well, he filled in for David Letterman, who was, who was, who felt completely ill. On on his show, on early two thousand three. That was February. That was February. That was February twenty six. February twenty six, two thousand three. I get just watch the late show. I was I was at school. I was at school. I was going. I felt I went to sleep and got up that morning. Went to school. I watched that shit. I watched the show. I was in my aunt. Uh, I was in my great aunt Dolores's house. Uh, most most that year, in two thousand three. Yep. Yes, I know the story. Yes, Bruce Willis appeared on the Late Show with David Letterman several several times throughout 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 his career. He filled in for an for an ill David Letterman on his on his show on February six or uh, February. That's a word on February twenty six, two thousand three. When he he was supposed to be to be a guest on his many appearances on the show, Willis staged elaborate jokes, elaborate jokes such such as wearing a, a day glow orange suit, yeah, a day glow orange suit in the honor of the Central Park Gates, having one side. Of, of his face, of his face, made up with a simulated birdshot wounds, birdshot wounds, after the uh, the Harry Whittington shooting, or trying to break a record. Well, it's a, a David Blaine parody, uh, I think, of staying, of staying, of staying like underwater for only 20 seconds. Until the late 2000s, he appeared again. This time wearing a Sanjaya Malakar wig. He was wearing a wig. A Sanjaya Malakar wig. 
on his June 15th. Oh, no, I forgot. He, he did appear again wearing a wig on April on April 12th, April 12th of 2007. But he did, but this time he wear he's wearing a wig. Well, his June 25th, on his June 25th, 2007 appearance, he wore he wore this mini wind turbine on his on his head to accompany a joke about his own fictional his own fictional documentary. It's titled "In Unappealing An Unappealing Hunch." That's what it is, an unappealing hunch. That could be some sort of a wordplay of an inconvenient truth. That could be an, a wordplay on an inconvenient truth. The Willis have appeared in Japanese, also in Japanese Subaru Legacy TV commercials, tying in with with this. Uh, the Subaru. He tying in with the Subaru did a limited run of legacies. Legacies that badging, they're badging the Subaru Subaru Legacy Touring. Uh Bruce in honor. In honor of Willis. Uh Willis had appeared in five films, like uh with Samuel with Samuel L. Jackson, uh National Loaded Weapon, uh one Pulp Fiction. Die Hard with a Vengeance, Unbreakable, and Glass. And both actors were slated to work together in Blackwater Transit. Before, before dropping out, before dropping out, Willis also work, worked with his eldest daughter, Rumor Willis. His eldest daughter, Rumor uh, Willis. In the 2005 film, Hostage. In 2007, in 2007, he appeared in a thriller called Perfect Stranger, opposite Halle Berry. Uh, the crime drama film, Alpha Dog. Yes, word, Alpha Dog, opposite Sherrod Stone. This woman, this woman, let me show you about this woman. This woman likes, this woman likes to, to be to be in to be in the movie, she wanna go, she wanna go, she wanna go cross her legs and over that and she wanna show up her pussy. She show up her pussy in the movie. That's what that's what she do. That's what that's that's what Sharon Stone does. That woman, that woman's gotta be like, okay, she show up her pussy. She ain't had nothing on in the movie. Sharon Stone's a freak. She's she's bit of a freak. But she not no more. She is old. She's too old to be a freak. <laughs> Back in the eighties and nineties, she might be sitting down in one of those movies, and all of a sudden she had no no drawers on. And this is what Bruce Willis do. What 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 Bruce Willis would do? We prized we we prized his role. As the same character as the John McClane character, the same character he played for the first Die Hard movie. In another Die Hard movie, it's called Live Free or Die Hard. Subsequently, he appeared in the films of what what just happened in Surrogates. That's the two. What just happened in Surrogates. That's based on the comic book of the same name, the same name. Willis was slated to play the U.S. Army General William R. Pierce in Oliver Stone's Pink Bill. It was in Pink Bill. That's directed by Oliver Stone. It was a drama about the investigation of the 1968 Malay Massacre. However, however, due to the 2007 Writers, Writers Guild of America uh, strike, the film the film was uh, indefinite. The film was indefinitely canceled. They canceled the film. They canceled the film because of the the Writers Guild uh, Writers Guild of America strike. The WGA it's because of the WGA strike. All due to it, they canceled the film. Willis had Willis appeared on 
Blues Traveler album. Uh, North Hollywood Hollywood Shootout. This is an album. North Hollywood Shootout. Looks like short for No Ho Shootout. Well, it's in 2008. It was in 2008 he appeared on it. But he's given a, a, a spoken he's given a spoken word performance over an instrumental blues rock jam on the track. Free Willis. That means that it means the ruminations from behind Uncle Uncle Bob's machine shop in early 2009. Early 2009. That was like in February. That was like in February. Uh, that year. That's year in February of uh, in February of that year that he was appearing in some advertising. It was an ad campaign he, he appeared in to publicize an insurance company. It's called Norwich Unions. Changed the name of Aviva, Aviva. The 2010s we're gonna we're gonna uh, digress to. Now, so 2010, Willis was the eighth highest grossing actor in a leading role and 12th highest including film roles, supporting supporting roles that he do. The supporting roles that this man had done, he was starred with uh with Tracy Morgan. Remember the guy who played Hustle Man on Martin? In the 2010 comedy Cop Out. Kevin Smith had directed this film. Kevin Smith had directed this film. Maybe I remember him from, from Clerks and Jay and Silent Bob movies. He directed this film. He started directing the film that he already had done. That's his that's his uh his uh his baby. He directed this film. It was about these two police detectives investigating the theft of a baseball card. Who the hell would steal a baseball card? Stylo. Yes, that's the word stylo. Uh, Willis, Willis appeared in that music video for that song by this group, by this uh this group called the Gorillas. It was an English virtual band. That was that was by that was been formed in the 90s by Damon Alborn and Jamie Hewlett. They're from the UK. Also in 2010, he appeared in a cameo with, with the, the ex Planet Hollywood co owners and 80s action stars like Sylvester Stallone here. I'll show you. Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'll be back. Is in this film. In this film, <laughs> he he started he started uh, appearing in a cameo with them. The ex Planet Hollywood co owners and eighties action stars, like like Stallone and Schwarzenegger, Stallone and Schwarzenegger. That was in this uh, film. It's called The Expendables. The Expendables. That was gonna be a film. Willis played the uh this role as uh as Mr. Church. It was the first time the three action stars, the three action stars, these three action stars, these guys are legends. It was the, it was the first time that these three these three action stars had appeared on screen together, together. Although the scene Featuring the three uh, was short. The scene featuring the three was uh, was so short. It was one of the uh, the most highly anticipated scenes in the film. The trio filmed their scene in an empty church on Oc on October twenty fourth, two thousand nine. Will starred in Red, an adaptation of the comic book miniseries of the same name. In which he portrayed as Frank Moses. The film was released in October on October twenty fifth. Uh, not was it October October fifteenth? I thought it was the middle of October. Uh, it was October. It was uh, October fifteenth of twenty ten. 
all the lead, all the guys he 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 started alongside Bill Bill Murray, Edward Norton, and and Francis McDormand, Francis McDormand, in Moonrise Kingdom. The filming took place in Rhode Island, in Rhode Island, under the direction of Wes Anderson. They're under Wes Anderson's direction. Yeah, they're on the direction of a man named Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson. See, that's him right here. Wes Anderson. They were under his direction. In 2011, in 2011, Willis returned in an expanded role in part two of The Expendables. Ex the Expendables 2. He appeared alongside Joseph Gordon-Levitt in the sci-fi action film Looper as the older version as the older version of Gordon Levitt's on Gordon Levitt's character Joe. Wallace teamed up with 50 Cent. Yeah, I was gonna say. I was gonna say, go push there. Wallace teamed up with 50 Cent, Curtis Jackson the third. In a film directed by David Barrett called Fire with Fire, Fire with Fire, starring opposite Josh DeHamel. Well, he was in in shows and he was in movies and things like that. He and then he played as a, a retired detective Greg Kading on uh, on the unsolved on the unsolved uh, series. But he was in this movie called Shotgun Wedding with Jennifer Lopez. That other scene, that other scene there. Oh boy, you already had that scene when when Jennifer Lopez, when Jennifer Lopez is holding a shotgun. He's holding. A sh that's what happened when Jennifer Lopez, the actress and singer. She's the one. She's the one holding holding a goddamn shotgun, getting ready to shoot people. She'll shoot people. She'll start holding a goddamn shotgun. Cock She'll cock their shotgun. She'll shoot people. That's why they call that movie Shotgun Wedding. So they'll call that movie Shotgun Wedding. That's what we're going to know of. Let's go to Josh Duhamel. Yep. No oh, son. Yep. Yep, this is for last year. Last year, uh, that's what uh, Josh Duhamel, Josh Duhamel is being featured in, Shotgun Wedding. That's how that's how uh, J Lo holds the shotgun. This is this is J Lo holding holding the shotgun. It's J Lo holding the shotgun while wearing a wedding dress, and Josh Duhamel, his wedding suit is so fucked up. It's so this suit is so fucking destroyed. He was getting ready. To, he was getting ready to fucking run and get the hell get the hell out of Dodge with with J Lo. J Lo was gonna hold a shotgun. She was getting ready to shoot people, bro. She, I know she ain't fucking around, man. She ain't playing around. <laughs> she ain't playing around. That's that's why they don't even fuck with her. Nobody fucks with her. Yep. That's right. Willis had teamed up with 50 Cent in a film directed by David Barrett called Fire with Fire. Fire with Fire. Storing, up, storing the opposites like Josh Duhamel and Rosario Dawson. About a fireman who save who must save the love, the love of his life. Willis also joined Vince Vaughn, the actor. And Catherine Zeta Jones in Lay the Favorite. Stephen Frears, Stephen Frears had were Stephen Frears had directed it. It's about a, a Las Vegas. It's about a Las Vegas uh, cocktail waitress who had becomes the elite professional gambler. Yeah, that's what she becomes a gambler, an elite. 
professional and elite pro gambler. The two films, I think it's distributed, it's distributed by E, Lionsgate, Lionsgate Entertainment. Willis had reprised his famous role, John McClain. That's gonna be his fifth time. I mean the fifth time he was going, he was gonna play that that John McClain character. Is starring in A Good Day to Die Hard, which was released in early 2013. In an interview, Willis said, I have a warm spot in my heart for Die Hard. It's just the sheer novelty of being able to play the same character for over 25 years and still be asked back is fun. It's much more challenging to have to do a film again and try to compete with myself. Which is what I do in Die Hard. I try to improve my work every time. On early October, on October of 2013, Willis hosted SNL with Katy Perry as a musical guest. In 2015, Willis made uh, his his uh, his debut in Broadway and uh, in William Goldman's adaptation of Stephen King's novel *Misery*. Opposite. Lori Metcalf, who Lori Metcalf, who played his aunt Jackie on Rose on Roseanne. Remember, remember her? She played Aunt Jackie on Roseanne. Remember her? At the Broadhurst Theater. His performance was it was generally panned by the critics, uh, who called it vacant and inert. Willis was the subject of a roast by Comedy Central by Comedy Central in a program broadcast in July of 29th of 2018. Willis had played himself in a cameo in the 2019 film, The Lego Movie 2, the second part. In the two, and this, this, this is what happened when the 2020s were here now. So we got to find out what happens. In the 2020s, that was in the final years of his career, Willis in starred in many low-budget independent indie thriller films and stuff like that. Yeah, Will starred in many low-budget indie indie thrillers and science fiction films, and he worked he worked primarily with the production companies like Emmett Fuller Oasis, it headed by Randall Emmett, headed by Randall Emmett and 308 Entertainment Inc., headed by Corey Large, Emmett Fuller Oasis, produced 20 storing films. 20 films. It produced 20 films that store in Willis, described by Chris Nashalti, by Chris Nashalti of Esquire as a profitable as a profitable sale harbor. For the older actors, similar to the expendables, most most of the films, most of the films were released direct to video and were widely were widely play, uh widely panned. Willis would often earn uh in the United States like two million dollars for two work days, two days of work with an average of 15 screen time minutes per film. 15 minutes of screen time per film. That's per film. He nonetheless featured heavily in the films Promotional materials earning them the derogatory, the derogatory nickname, the geezer teasers. That's what the name looked like. The geezer teasers. Those who those that working on the films later said that Willis uh, Willis uh, Willis appeared confused and did not and did not understand why he was there. And he had to be fed lines. He had to be fed lines through an earpiece. Days before Willis was scheduled to arrive on the set, on the set for Out of Death, Out of Death, uh, the screenwriter was instructed 
to reduce to reduce his role and abbreviate abbreviate his dialogue. And the director Mike Burns, Mike Burns, who was the director, was told to complete all of Willis's uh, complete all the scenes that uh, Bruce Bruce Willis Bruce Willis had done in Out of Death. Yeah, yeah, Mike Burns, bro, the director. They told they told him to complete all of Bruce Willis's scenes. They told him to complete all of Bruce Willis's scenes in a single day of filming. The Golden Raspberry Awards. Uh, I ain't going go, go to that raspberry shit on camera. You, know, you, you, you people on YouTube will be you people uh, that watch this girl be end up laughing in my ass. An annual award for the year's worst films and performances created a dedicated category. Yeah, a dedicated category, the worst Bruce Willis performance in a 2021 movie for his eight his roles in eight films released that year until March of last year. On March 30th of last year, Willis's family. They announced that, they announced that he was retiring from films because he had been diagnosed with aphasia. Aphasia, a disorder typically caused by the damage to the area of the brain, of the brain that controls language, expression, and comprehension. The Golden Raspberry Awards retracted its Willis category, saying it was inappropriate to award a GR, uh, a Golden Raspberry, to someone whose performance was affected by a medical condition. At the time of his retirement, Willis, Willis had completed 11 films awaiting release on February of February 16th of this year, on February 16th of this year, Willis's family announced that he had been diagnosed with with frontal temporal dementia. Frontal temporal dementia. In a statement, the family said the family said that Willis's Willis's condition had progressed, had progressed, and that challenges. With, with the communication or just one symptom of the disease. There's business activities of Willis. He owned a house in LA. He owned houses in LA and in PG. He, uh, yeah, he owns houses in Los Angeles and in, uh, in Penn's Grove, in Penn's Grove, New Jersey. He also rents apartments at the Trump Tower and Enterprises. I'm sorry. Cheyenne Enterprises. Cheyenne Enterprises. He left the company to be run solely by Rifkin in 2007 after Live Free or Die Hard. He also owns several small businesses in Haley, Idaho, including the Mint Bar and the Liberty Theater, was was and was one of the first. Promoters of Planet Hollywood. Okay, he's going to Planet Hollywood like an idiot, like he wants to do it. All the guys think about say something, the fucking thing keeps stable, the fucking piece of shit connection keeps stabling, keep unstabling. God, I hate YouTube. They fucking suck ass. I might just be, I might just be better off on fucking Twitch. Yep. He left. He left the company. Yeah, everybody else knows that. Let me let me go back to it. Let me go back to this shit. In two thousand, Willis and his business partner Arnold Rifkin started a motion picture company, motion picture production company called Cheyenne Enterprises. He left. He left the company to be uh to be run solely by Rifkin in two thousand seven. After Live Free or Die Hard movie, he owns several small businesses in Haley, Idaho, including the Mint Bar 
and the Liberty Theater and was one of the first promoters of Planet Hollywood with actors Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, Sylvester Stallone. Willis, Willis and the other actors were paid for their appearances and endorsements through an employee stock ownership plan. In 2009, he signed a contract to become the international face of Belvedere's SA's, Belvedere SA's Sobieski, Sobieski Vodka in exchange for 3.3% ownership in the company. But Willis would have acting model, acting role models, people that 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 uh that school him to be an actor. The acting role models he had was uh Gary Cooper, was Gary Cooper, Robert De Niro, Steve McQueen, and the late John, and the late John Wayne, the late John Wayne. He is left-handed. He resides in the Brentwood neighborhood in the L.A. in L.A. I think it was with. Oh, he resides in the Brentwood neighborhood of Los Angeles with his family. I think I did not know that. At the premiere in the film Stakeout, Willis met uh, Demi Moore. They married on uh, on late on late 1987. He married in late 1980s. They married in like what? They went. They they they, they dropped. They signed what they dropped. They married in the November 21st, 1987, and he had three daughters with her including Rumor, who was born in 1988. That was August of 1988. Willis, Willis and Moore announced their, their separation around that same year before before Rumor, Rumor was born. Uh, it was June 24th, June 24th of that year. They filed for divorce on October, 20, uh, October 18th of 2000. Yeah, October 18, 2000, they filed for divorce. Uh, the divorce was so finalized later that day. Regarding regarding the divorce, Willis has Willis has stated that that he felt that he felt that he failed as a father and a husband by not being able to make it work. He credited uh, actor Will Smith. For helping, for helping him cope with the situation. He maintained a close friendship with, with both Moore and her subsequent husband, actor Ashton Kutcher, for attending, for attended and attended their wedding, their wedding that they attended. Uh, after 10 months together, he married uh, model Emma Hemming in Turks and Caicos. On March 21st of 2009, the guests included his three daughters as well as more and Kutcher. The ceremony was not legally legally uh, binding, so the couple went, went again in a civil ceremony in Beverly Hills. In Beverly Hills, six days later. The couple has two daughters, one born in 2012, another and another in born in 2014. Willis was a Lutheran, but no longer practices. In a July 1998 interview with George Magazine, he stated that organized religions in general, in my opinion, are dying forms. They were all very important. When we didn't know why the sun moved, why weather changed, why hurricanes occurred or volcanoes or volcanoes happened modern religions the modern religion is the end of end of modern mythology but there are people who interpret the bible literally literally i choose not not to believe that's the way and that's what um, what makes america cool you know Political views. This is political views that he did in 1988 back then. Uh, in, in, Willis, Willis in, uh, and Moore campaigned for the Democratic Massachusetts Governor Michael Dukakis's 
presidential bid. Four years later, he supported uh, uh, former President George H.W. Bush, who was still resting in peace, for the re-election, re-election, and was outspoken and was an outspoken critic of, of Bill Clinton. However, in 1996, in 1996, he he, he declined. He declined to do so. He declined to endorse Clinton's Republican Republican opponent, uh, uh, who happened to be Bob Dole, the late Bob Dole, because Dole had criticized Demi Moore for her role in the film Striptease, because the powers that be wanted her to wanted her to be in this movie Striptease. They wanted to put that. They told her to be in the movie Striptease. It's a 1996 film. You see, you see her naked. You see her naked in the cover. Willis Willis was in was an invited speaker at the 2000 Republican National Convention and supported and supported George W. Bush that year. In 2006. Willis stated, Willis stated that the U.S. should intervene more in Colombia in order to end drug trafficking, to end drug trafficking in several interviews. In several interviews, Willis, had, Willis has said that he supports large salaries for the teachers and the police officers, that means the cops. And he, was said, he said that he is so disappointed in the U.S. foster care system yeah, the foster care system, the U.S. foster care system that he is disappointed in, as well as the treatment of Native Americans. Oh, that means the Indians. That means the Indians. That means the Indians. Willis also stated that, that he is a supporter of gun rights. Gun rights. Stating that everyone, everyone has a right to bear arms if you take if you take guns away from legal gun owners, then then the only people who have guns are the bad guys. Yeah, the bad guys. The only people. Yeah, then the and then the only people who have guns are the bad guys, the criminals, especially the criminals. In early two thousand six, in early two thousand six. Willis was in Manhattan to promote his film, 16 Blocks, 16 Blocks. It was a Richard Donner uh, uh, film. It's a, it's a Richard Donner directed film. So what, 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 what the reporters that, obviously it was with this. It was with the reporters, with the reporters, there's one reporter that was attempted to ask him, to ask Willis that, about his opinion on the Bush administration, the Bush administration, and this is but but he was but he but the interviewer, the reporter man, he got interrupted by Willis in the mid sentence when he started saying, he said this shit, he said this shit in a in a derogatory way. He said, "I'm sick of answering this fucking question." I'm a Republican. Only as far as I want smaller, a smaller government. I want less government intrusion. I want them to. I want them to stop shitting. I want them to stop shitting on my money, and your money, and tax dollars that we get fifty percent of every year. I want them to be physically to be physically responsible, and I want these goddamn lobbyists out of Washington. Do that, and I'll say I'll say I'm a Republican. I hate the government. Okay, I'm apolitical. Write that down. I'm not a Republican. That's what he said. That's his derogatory, profanity, profanity laced uh, uh, you know, sentence. Willis and Willis did not make. Any contributions or public or public endorsements 
in the 2008 presidential campaign. In several interviews in June 2007, he declared that he maintained some Republican ideologies. Wilson's name was in an ad in the LA Times in August 17th, on August 17th, 2006, that he condemned Hamas and Hezbollah and supported Israel in the 2006 Israel-Israel-Lebanon War. Yeah, the Israel-Lebanon War. 2012, 2012, Willis has stated that that he had a negative opinion of Mitt Romney. So the military interests that we all see here. Throughout his film career, Willis was depict, has depicted several military characters in films such as In the Country, in Country The Siege, Hearts War, Tears of the Sun, Grindhouse, Jagel Retaliation. Growing up in a military family, Willis has donated Girl Scout cookies to the U.S. Armed Forces. In 2002, Willis, then eight-year-old daughter, Talula, well, she's all grown up now. She's all grown up now. Uh, Talula suggested that he purchase Girl Scout cookies to send the troops. Willis purchased 12,000 boxes of cookies and then were distributed to sailors aboard the USS John F. Kennedy and the other troops stationed throughout the Middle East at the time. In 2003, Willis visited uh, Iraq as the part of the USO tour, singing, singing to the troops with his band, the Accelerators. Willis considered joining the military to help fight the second Iraq war, the Iraq war, but he was deterred by his age. It was believed that he offered $1 million in United States currency to any non-combatant who turned in terrorist, terrorist leaders such as Osama bin Laden. They, about to, they, about to, they found him and killed his ass. Yeah, they, they found and killed his ass. I'm Ayman al-Sawahiri. What was the name? Ayman, Ayman al-Zawahiri. Yeah, he yeah, they killed his ass last year. They, they they killed his ass last year. Or Abu Musab Al Zagawi or Zakawi. What's the name? That name looked like some ridiculous name. Or who's that? Abu Musab Al Zakaw or Zakawi. What's that name? Abu Musab Al Zakawi. Al was this? Abu Musab Al Zarqawi. Zarqawi, that's the name. Abu Musab, Abu Musab Al Zarqawi. That's the name. That looks like an Arab name to me. It looks like some Arabian name to me. It's an Arabian or Arab name. It's an Arabian name I don't even know of. In the June 2007 issue of Vanity Fair, however, that, that he clarified. Wallace clarified that uh, the statement that was made hypothetically is not meant to be taken literally. Wallace has also criticized the media for its coverage of the war, complaining that the press was more likely to focus on the negative, negative aspects of the war. He says, I went to Iraq because what I saw when I was over there, over there, as we said. He said this, I went to Iraq because what I saw when I was over there, when I was over there, soldiers, with soldiers, kids, for the most part, helping, helping people in Iraq, helping getting the power turned back on, helping get hospitals, helping get hospitals open hoping get the water turned back on and you don't hear any of that on the news you hear x number x number of people were killed today 
I think, which I think does a huge disservice. It's like spitting on these young men and women who are who are over there fighting to help this country. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be one hour and fifteen minutes. So I gotta read this shit up, man. It's all the work that he do. Words and honors. That's all they got him in. Yeah, he earned that too. Oh, he earned everything too. He earned everything. Let's go to the top before I end this shit. I'm going. I'm about to go do a live show based on uh, on Spike on Spike Lee tomorrow. On Spike Lee, I'm gonna do a live show based on him tomorrow. Let me go read this again. Walter Bruce Wallace. That's what name is. This is from the Alexa Answers contribution contribution. Walter Bruce Wallace. That's what it is. That's what W means. Walter Bruce Wallace, that's what BR means. I'm what world are. Walter Bruce Wallace. He is a retired American actor. He achieved fame with a leading role on the comedy drama series Moonlighting, Moonlighting, and appeared in over a hundred films, gaining recognition as an action hero. After his portrayal of John McClane in the Die Hard franchises from 1988 to 2013 and other roles. Willis's other credits, including The Last Boy Scout, Death Becomes Her, Pulp Fiction, Twelve Monkeys, The Fifth Element, Armageddon, The Sixth Sense, Unbreakable, Sin City, Red, Moonrise Kingdom, Looper, and Red 2. In the later years of his career, Wallace uh, has starred in many low-budget direct-to-video films. Direct-to-video films, I guess, were poorly received in March in March of last year. In March of last year, yeah, March of 2022, that's last year. Wallace's family announced, yeah, that's what happened. The family of Bruce Wallace had announced that he was retiring. He was retiring after suffering, suffering from aphasia. Aphasia, he was suffering, he was suffering from that diagnosis, that diagnosis. And, and a month ago, and February of this year, that was a month ago, that was a month ago, that he was officially diagnosed with frontal temporal, yeah, his words, frontal Temporal dementia. As a singer, Willis Willis released his Willis released his debut album "Return the Return of the Bruno the Return of Bruno," which had happened in 1987. He uh, in '87, he followed by followed by two more albums in '89, and in 2001, he made his Broadway debut. His Broadway debut in the stage adaptation of Misery in 2015. Willis has Willis has received golden, not golden. He receives he receives those various accolades throughout his career, including a Golden Globe Award, the two Primetime Emmy Awards, the two People's Choice Awards. He received a star on the Hollywood on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In 2006 films featuring Willis had grossed between uh two uh yeah uh what's it 2060 also two was it 264 264 billion in uh in US 3.5 billion what was it 2.64 billion dollars in in 3.5 billion dollars? That's in U.S. currencies. That's in U.S. currencies. Uh, 
that's U.S. currencies. Uh, that's the North at the North American box offices, making him in 2010 the the eight highest grossing. They have eight highest grossing leading actor. But I did not. I did not even know this shit happened. I'll do a live show based on uh, on Spike Lee if I had to go get up and do this shit. Spike Lee. Might as well do a live show based on him tomorrow. If I be forced to wake up and do this shit. Tomorrow I'm going to tomorrow I'm going to go do a goddamn film. Not film, but Tomorrow I'm glad we'll do another live show based on on Spike Lee. On Spike Lee. You know, Spike Lee is a legend in in, in films. He been he be doing all the all the work. He did a bunch of work. This one go do. I might have to go do another movie, movie sized uh live show tomorrow. So I might go do a a, a movie sized live show tomorrow based on based on uh on him. Yeah, I might go do a a, a live show based on uh, on Spike Lee. Based on, you know, I gotta do it like movie size. I gotta do it like motion picture movie size, just like I did with uh with this live show. I gotta go do this tomorrow. God, I had to go do this tomorrow with uh with Spike Lee. Spike Lee uh uh birthday celebration. I gotta go do that. I'm gonna do that tomorrow when I get back up. Mind me to come back uh here to do uh to go watch off the script because I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what the, the Amazon thing did to YouTube. I don't know what they done to YouTube. I don't know what the hell they done to YouTube. I'll come back. I'll come back with uh my phone and my speaker and stuff. I might watch uh watch my card. Probably tonight. I might watch off the script. Off the script. I might watch that to uh tonight. Uh, I'm not gonna jeopardize that, and I'm not gonna jeopardize. That with uh with off the script because I gotta go do the Spike Lee Spike Lee birthday celebration tomorrow. I gotta do it. I gotta do it all day. Uh tomorrow and and not doing off the script uh uh tomorrow. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do all the script. I'm gonna watch all the script tonight, so I can, so I can get through to all of it. See you tomorrow.